Hi, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Paul. It's so great. If you have not subscribed to this channel, click on the subscription button below and turn on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I create a new tutorial. Today, I want to show you how to use custom states in Bubble IO. This is part of a bigger tutorial. It's um, so on that tutorial, it's four hours and 26 minutes. I cover how you can get started building with Bubble. It's free. Click on the link below to assess it. And if you're looking forward to building apps in Bubble, mobile or web applications in Bubble and you need help, feel free to reach out to me and I'll definitely give you a big helping hand. So let's get started with learning how to use custom states in Bubble IO. Custom states are, are dynamic numbers or they are options, just very similar to option sets, they're very similar to options. but. You can use it to store variables on your user's browser that changes whenever they, they load a page. So if I want to store a particular variable, say for example, you're doing it using a shopping cart and you want to store, your customers keep adding stuff to the shopping cart. You can use, you can update custom states as they add and you can update the custom states as they remove. It works in so many ways. You can use your custom states for conditional statements also. If you, if 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 you did your students load the page or maybe your users load the page, then a particular custom state can be set. And if they create a page, a particular custom state can be set. You can, a custom state can be anything. It could be any data type. It can be a list. It can be same way you would create a data type for your database, like so, like here, and here. That's the same way you would add a custom a custom state. You would create a custom state. So let's do it this way. Let's um, let's start from the beginning. So let's go ahead and just add a. So this is a repeating group. Let's go ahead and add another another group. We're just going to use this to demonstrate custom state. Add another another group. So I'm just going to remove. Make this a flat color. Make give this a red and make it ten. I'm going to give you the red and make it done. So that's that's fine. And this, I'm going to turn this layout into a column. So it stacks on top of each other. And I'm going to move this up and this other one down. And on my move it down and this, I'm just going to, just to make it look a bit beautiful, I'm going to give it a, a bottom of 50. Just to make it look great and give this a button of 50 or so just to make it look great and this is where i'm going to be displaying stuff so i'm just going to put a test i'm going to put a test right here this is where we'll display the custom state so first and first to create a custom state i like it that when you go to click on the element tree you click on the first page this is the page that should house your entire custom states everything this particular one when you click on this i I mean this icon here it will bring out the element inspector and then you can create new custom states so you can see right here add new custom states they are temporary storage so that's what it's doing it's just just in temporarily so the caveat about custom state is that whenever a user reloads and the his or browser the custom state is gone so i really don't advise you to use custom state for off-page navigation. You can use it for in-page navigation, but for off-page navigation, I do not want you to use custom states. So we're just going to say, um, we're going to say name. So this is going to be the name of recipe. Uh, so let's change it to recipe name, like so. And then, like I said, the type can be anything. It could be anything. It can be a test, a number, a string. So we're gonna call this a test. And that's it. We're gonna call it a test, and there's no default value. We're not gonna add a default value on this one. And then, so this here, we're going to call it like so. Call it. Do a search. We're gonna see just like so. We're gonna add dynamic data, and then we're going to find that custom state. And the custom state is in the page. It's in the top page. You can see this top page. Page data manipulation. This one. That's a manipulation page. That's where we have the custom state. So we we'll come here and find that page data manipulation two recipe name. 
That's it. So that's a custom state app. That's this is where the custom state is going to leave. Every time a user opens their browser, they will see this custom state. And if our custom state has a default value, that's what they're going to see every time. So let's go back and just add a default value so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm just going to say default value, like so. And I'm going to reload the page. So you can see these are custom state and it has a default value. That's it. But let's go ahead and make it dynamic. So what I want to do is that I want this custom state to have, every time this is pressed, I want this custom state to have the same value. So if it is clicked, I want it to have that same value when it's clicked. The, so when a, when a user click on quizzing, this custom state is going to have quizzing. Click on plans, it's going to become plan. They keep on click on privileges, it's going to become privileges. So see where we're going? See where we're going? So I'm going to remove the default value, like so. I'm going to remove the default value and then come here and say when a user click on this yeah when a user click on this i'm going to say start workflow i'm going to say set so that's what we'll, that's this is what we'll do set custom state set state of an element and what state do you want to set data manipulation recipe name value should be this test this test or current search category it's fine we're going to make it this test, so not this test. We're going to make it current search category display. That's what we're going to make it. I, I hope you get me. So it is, so we are saying set state of an element, and we're looking for the that particular custom state. And the custom state is this one, or we can simply create a new one here if we want to. We can create a new one here if we want to, maybe like recipe price. I'm going to call it number. Yeah. And it's going to be, we're going to set the current state price number. So we just created, we're setting two states now. Hope you understand. If you don't understand, go back again and just rewind a bit. So now that we have, to, we, we just decided to set two states, I'm going to reduce this one and I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to duplicate this and then this is going to be the price. Then I'm going to refresh. You see, at the instant, there is nothing because nothing has been clicked. But once we click, you can see Cousin 20. You can see Plan 50, Bridge 56. So what's happening is that every time you click, this guy is holding a new value. Every time you click, he's holding a new value. Every time you click, it's holding a new value. That's one thing to do with custom states. And also with custom states, you can actually navigate you can actually navigate in app so i don't i don't i don't advise you to navigate use custom state when you're going to another page because it doesn't hold any value I do not advise you to use custom state when you're navigating so say for example say for example um, let us put a box so we're going to put another repeating group we're going to put another um Okay, not a representing group. Let's just put a a group here. Put a group here. Control D. Put. So put a group. Control D. Put another group here. So we have two groups. This I'm going to make this group. I'm going to make the background color mm, like so. Then this one I'm going to make the background color. Flat color. Just follow me. We're doing something good. This is really going to help you in the future and I'm going to say not this is really going to help you in the future so now remember when we go back here we have two price we have we have price and we have this so we have cuisine and we have plants so same thing if you're navigating that's something you do if you just click on this you want something to happen if you click on this you want something to happen and here we want this to show based on this custom state value based on the custom state value we want each of one of these to show the color. We want one of these groups to show based on the custom state value. This is just navigation. Think of this as part of your application. So I'm going to click the first one and I'm going to say conditional when page, so uh, uh, manipulation something, when data manipulation, so custom state recipe name is reason like this. 
we done with set visibility. We've not talked about this before. Set visibility, set this to visible. And you have to spell it very well. So this is the spelling of quizzing. So I'm going to copy. So go back here and spell it very well. S is not going to have any effect if you don't spell it very well. This is visible. And then I'll come back to my layout. And this is not visible on page load. Turn it into a column and say it's going to say collapse when heating. This is not visible on page load. That's fine. And then we'll come back here and say not visible on page load. Yeah. Then we'll go ahead here and say when the same thing that uh, the same thing when this recipe name is plant when the recipe name is plant and this element is visible so hope we got it right this is plant here yeah. so let's go ahead and refresh if it sounds like Greek to you don't worry you're just getting started you're going to get it so can you see cuisine this is visible plant okay probably we didn't get it right so that's why it's not visible so this is capital P I think so let's just copy the plant Go back here, put the name here, plant, and that should work now. That should work. And so this is plant, now it's visible. This is cuisine, now it's visible. So you should really notice that whenever I reload the page, the custom state is gone. So you can see cuisine, you can see plant. And last, I want to show you something. If you are if you're building something that has to do with an e-commerce, if you're building an e-commerce website, then you're going to you're going to need you're going to be doing this in a very different way entirely. So I'm gonna delete all this, I'm gonna delete all this. The way you do it, the kind of custom state you likely create will be a repeat will be a list. So we'll come here and we would create something like add a new custom state. So it'll be like cart. You always have carts, right? And this will be a list of recipes. So the cart will be a list of recipes. So if this if what you're selling is food, anything, this is just going to be a list of recipe. That's what it's going to be. And then this is going to be a list. So you say this this set this state is a list. So it, it contains multiple entries. So we're going to say create, create. And then I'm just going to I'm just going to delete this part of it. You know this part of this the part that's showing the price. And I'm going to add a I'm going to add two icons. Just follow me. I'm going to add one icon over here. It's going to be add to cart. So we're going to call this like plus. Just follow me and then I'll add another icon. Duplicate this icon, put it over here. And I'm going to call it minus. So one of these is going to add the item to the cart and the other is going to remove the item from the cart. So we are going to display our cart. We're going to display it over here. And the cart here is going to be a repeating group. It's the way it works for, even if you're building a big web, a big mobile application, a small mobile, mobile application, all these things, just all this tiny thing that you learn here is the same thing you're going to be, you're going to be doing in a very big application, you respect how big it is. So these small things always lead to the big things. So this is going to be, data type is going to be, it's going to be a recipe. And then the data source is going to be is going to be our data manipulation recipe. It's going to be our cut. Data manipulation cut. That's what it's going to be. Remember it's a recipe because our cut is a list of recipe, right? And this is going to be our data source is going to be our data manipulation cut. And then we'll just have our name here. So we have our name. This is going to be the name of the current sales recipe's name. So this is what we have in cart now. So when we click this, what do we want to happen? We want to add it to the cart. So we say set state. So uh, set state of an element. Set state of an element, data manipulation, cart. Value. Current sales category price uh, display. 
So which is very wrong. I see it's super wrong now because this is we're not just setting state for one element. So what we're supposed to be doing, we're supposed to be adding to the list. So when you do it that way, you can see it's not working because you are just changing. So we don't want to change things on the cart. What we want to do is to add items to, to, to the already existing item in that cart. So what we do is we'll go ahead and set a thing. So that's this of an element, same way. <clears throat> data manipulation and we set the cart and this time it's going to be a bit different so we'll go again look for that data manipulation item we will say cart and then we will say plus item so what we want to do is to add items so we say plus so we say plus item current cell display so we say plus item current cell display name that's what we want to add So we want to, it's a list of recipe and we're not displaying recipe and that is very, very wrong. So we're having, we're making it wrong here. Let's go back again. Let's go back. This is a list of recipe and this is not supposed to be so. So we'll come back here and say this is supposed to be a list of search category. That's it. So let's go back to our custom search again. Let's go back to our workflow and say cart. Then this is going to be plus item plus item and then it's going to be current sales category so you can see it's working now and then when the user click on the minus we want to do the same workflow we'll come to set custom state now set state of an element that's what we want to do set state of a thing set state of a thing and then we'll click on the data manipulation click on the cart what do you want to do data manipulation and then we want to do the cart and then we want to minus this time. So we'll say minus item and we want to minus current search category item. So that's basically how you do it. So let's go ahead and see if this is working. So if you click on the plus sign, what's going to happen? Oh, what's happening? Not, it's, it's showing, but we're not seeing the item here. So let's go back here. We're not seeing the item here. So we're not seeing the item here so this is going to be okay i think we're current search category display okay yeah that's it so let's go ahead and refresh now so we have one item cuisine two item plant three item beverages we delete 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 and we can add 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 and we, so you can see if, if we have that item in the list already if i click add in it you can see nothing happens nothing happens but if we if we have it in the list it minus if we don't have it in the list it just add that particular item to to it so that's basically the way you would use custom states in in bubble i want to say i want to say a big thank you to you for watching this tutorial please if you've not subscribed go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you can always be notified when i drop a new video and you're looking you're looking for help to build your bubble application feel free to click on the link below and i'll definitely do all to help you out thank you so much for watching again have a lovely lovely bubble journey ahead